Hey everybody, it's Maggie um, from my Inquiry Learning Station for Physics. I'm going to be showing you an activity about creating your own compass. So the central focus of this activity or of the lesson that you could use um, is to introduce children and students to magnetic poles um, and give them some time to work with these and figure them out. So um, some related concepts to this activity would be forces. You could talk about the magnetic force talk about gravity and the different forces that will be in your compass. You can also talk about direction, so north, south, east, and west. Um, and another thing is the magnetic field, which you'll see when the um, compass is being repelled or pulled towards the magnet. So this activity aligns with a lot of NGSS standards. I will be talking about two, one of which is 3PS24. Design a simple design, define a simple design problem that can be solved by applying scientific ideas about magnets. So for this standard, I would create a lesson where students are given all of the materials to create their compass except for a magnet. When they put a compass together and we test to see if it works, they'll realize that it's not showing the correct direction, and then I will give them a magnet to use. I'll ask them to create a compass again and then explain the problem of how, why their compass didn't work without the magnet and how the magnet helped. The other standard would be K2ETS13, which is analyzed data from tests of two objects de designed to solve the same problem to compare the strengths and weaknesses of how each performs. So for this standard, I would have an activity where students are put into groups either four to six, depending on the class size, they would create their compasses together and then I would put them, I would pair groups together and they would compare their two different compasses, show, talk about their strengths and weaknesses, why one worked, why one didn't. And so when planning for this lesson, you need to be conscious of a few safety things. So we're using sewing needles, um, so it would be really important to discuss with students to hold the eye where the little hole is and keep the point down um, because that's the part that can poke you and to be really careful with those. Um, and another safety concern would be water spilling. So you're gonna fill your bowl to the complete top, um, and if the bowl's too close to the edge or you pour too fast, it's really possible to get water all over the floor where students might slip and fall. So it's important to talk about walking in the classroom as well as keeping the bowl in the middle of the table. So some challenges of this activity, one being safety, another is background. So depending on where you're teaching in the United States or around the world, um, students might not be as knowledgeable about compasses, depending on the jobs in that area, activities in the area, so it might be necessary to build some background, show different compasses, explain what they're used for, just to help students make those connections. Um, so some benefits are that kids can work outside. So a really cool elaboration to creating a compass would be taking the compass outside on the playground or behind the school, wherever there's space, and using it to see if they can find the cardinal directions around their school. And then they could use um, like an electronic compass or another one to, to show that they're correct. Um, another benefit is that this connects to the real world. So you can talk about jobs that use compasses or how settlers use compasses, things like that. So now I'm gonna show you how to create the compass. What's really important to note is that this would be the exploration station or the exploration um, activity for this lesson. So students would be given the materials and have to create it on their own, but I will show you the steps to make a compass. So first, you will pour your water into your bowl. You wanna fill it to the brim. You can also use a cup, but through trial and error, I found the bowl works the best. It's very important to fill all the way to the top so your cork will stay in the center of the bowl. And then you can take a cork, so we used one like this, that's, it's more of a plastic, and it cuts better instead of a more traditional cork. So you'll cut it pretty thin, and then you make a little groove in it so your needle will sit. This is really important, a job for teachers to do. So then you'll take your needle, your sewing needle, you'll hold the eye, and you'll take your magnet, and you'll strike it with the south side. Strike it from the eye to the point about 10 times, so you're giving it some magnetic properties here. Then you will put your needle in the groove of your cork, just like this, center it as much as you can, and then you'll place it in the middle of your bowl. So what's going to happen is once it gets set, it's going to point north. So the compass is pointing north. So it's moved to the outside of the bowl, but we'll move back. 
So you can see the eye is pointing north and that's because we used the south end to strike it. So if I were to put the south end to the north side, it would turn, it would repel. Um, and same with the north side to the south end, it would repel. So that's something that students can work with to see how the poles work. Um, and then they can expand on this activity. You could give them another needle that hasn't been um, magnetized at all and see if their, if their compass still works. Um, you can ask them to pick it up and move it and see what happens with the needle when you do put it back in the center. Um, and so students can really play with it and see why the poles of the magnet do affect the compass. And then after you do this, this is when you would have students talk about the compasses, talk about what worked and what didn't, or when you would have them um, elaborate on it and take it outside. So this is just a little part of the lesson, but this is the activity of creating your own compass.